what, according to you, is the, the source of defects in our civilization? I can put it, up, put it uh, uh, this way, quoting, uh, quoting uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. To lo live is to be unjust. There is a kind of fissure mm -hmm. that runs through every human deed, every, every human uh, heart, which leaves a stain in the world. Every act of human beings is projected into the world that is always already stained. We as human beings, we as beings in time, beings of transcendence, we are so to speak, irreparable to, our, to ourselves. And I think the great challenge that we face is not so much how to save the world, but how to make all life flourish in a world that cannot be saved. Okay, this is, this is all too metaphysical for me. Um, I want to get physical, really. One definition of the world is the physical nature of the planet. The first thing that Donald Trump says he will do is abandon the climate change accord, which only came into being last week. Sort of amazing to me that actually, if we're talking about saving the world, the first thing is actually doing something about arresting the, the appallingly threatening atrocity of climate change. The fact that Donald Trump, it's not a problem for him, actually, that he could, and someone who, by the way, has a large house in Florida where slimy inundation is already lapping at the foundations can do this, means that actually reason is dead. The entirety of the election campaign was a victory of lies, falsehood, uh, irrationality over reason. So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is how do we actually develop a form of communication which is not intellectual? I, exactly, I'm so interested in your, in your out, brilliantly outrageous interpolation. How do we actually... <laughs> How do we actually make reason entertaining? How do we speak? How many millennials are there out there in the darkness, actually? If you put up your hands, I couldn't see you anyway. Right, okay, okay. Not enough of you showed up to vote in Minnesota and Arizona. And, and, and so this is, you know, if we start with the basic question of how to save the planet Earth, then we get to the question of how do we find a language that deals with the entertainment of unreason? Right. But I still want you to elaborate on your opening statement that uh, uh, on the Enlightenment, which was killed by amusement. Or, oh, right. Why, why your faith in the Enlightenment? Why Miroslav was talking about uh, the false beliefs of the Enlightenment? Well, I have a very low threshold of acceptability for the Enlightenment. I'm not talking Dr. Pangloss here. I'm just saying the possibility of affecting a political decision by distinguishing lies from truth. That's, you know, kind of ground zero of the Enlightenment, really. Things follow from that. That has been essentially confounded. It didn't matter that, that you know, when, when Donald Trump was caught out of the lie, he, as we say in America, doubled down on the lie. That seems to be something the Marquis de Condorcet could probably not have anticipated. Fascism, totalitarianism, authoritarianism in America, this is too much. So it's unproductive, and it may not be true. Let's be calm and affirm our values. This, I'm just going to say, is unproductive language right now. Let me ask you, how is it working for you? How is it working for you to call people fascists and racists? Brilliantly. Are you winning? Well, Are you, is that a good strategy? We've only had three days to try it. You Did, know. Was that a good... We're barely at strategic operational planning. Was phase, that a good you know? strategy to win calm, this election? I think calm is surrender. I think calmness is capitulation. Was it I, a... Calm did not work in 1933. Good. It will not work now. We need excitement. What seemed also important to me is that we in the Western and increasingly in the broader than Western culture have invested all of our energies uh, to speak in biblical traditions, in turning stones into bread, into kind of economic activity that organizes the uh, entirety of our personal but also political, I think, alting lives. But 
the result of that is always proving to be disappointing. The, the levels of happiness have not matched the levels of, of, of increase in wealth, uh, increase in sense of uh, also physical well-being. And I think there's a kind of crisis of meaning that's, uh, that's uh, uh, haunting the world uh, today.